Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to the movie review, and like I said, after reviewing the first um, uh, Captain America film, now I'm going to get into the review of the sequel, Maybe because like I started reviewing the two, these two films, because like I said, Captain America Civil War is just going to be coming out pretty soon, so, but I have to figure out, uh, review these before it comes out, so after so I review the first film, the first Avenger, now I'm going to review the sequel, Captain America The Winter Soldier. Now, Captain America The Winter Soldier, I enjoy this more than the first one. Um, I, this, is a, this is a great sequel, and I, absolutely, I, I just absolutely love this one. It was definitely one of my favorite films of uh, 2014. And I, really, I just really enjoyed this film, and... Chris Evans playing as Captain America, fantastic job. Also in the casting as well, Star Scarlett Johansson. Once again, she played a, she did a really good job as playing as Black Widow. Um, Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury. Sebastian Stan as um, Bucky Barnes, now the win uh, the Winter Soldier, and also uh, Robert Redford, right down there or down there. Robert Redford, I thought he played a great uh, job as the bad guy, as Alexander Pierce. It also juices to the cast, also Sam, um, uh, Anthony Mackie as Sam Wilson, a.k.a. Falcon. I thought he also did a very good job as well. Um, um, we also, um, we also had um, um, Kobe Smulders from um, How I Met Your Mother. She played Maria Hill from... Um, she, she was introduced in the first Avengers movie, and she comes back as Maria Hill. Um, Haley, At Haley Atwell has a as a small appearance as Peggy Carter. But um, oh, and a uh, Frank Grillo as Crossbones, basically. And the film when the film came out in, in, in April had a huge opening weekend. It had at the time it was the highest opening in April at the time. But um. And you see, it got a lot, but it got a lot of praise, and has got even a lot um, higher ratings than IMDb Rotten Tomatoes. This is this one has a seven point eight IMDb and has a eighty nine percent Rotten Tomatoes. Um, more and more than the, the first uh, film, and it grossed even more and made even more money than the first film. Had totally a seven hundred seven hundred fourteen million on its budget of one hundred seventy million. And, and it was also even nominated Academy Award for best for best effects, but it didn't win because Interstellar won for best visual effects, which I like Interstellar and the visual effects are very beautiful to look at, so I, I see why it won the Oscar for it. But this one was worth it to to get nominated for an Oscar for best best effects. And it's also directed by and it's also um. But first, I wasn't sure because because there's direct the the two directors directed by um, Anthony and Joe Russo. Um, they um they direct they directed uh, the comedy with Owen Wilson, Matt Dillon, called um, "You, Me, and Dupree." And but I was not tell sure because they directed a comedy like that. They were going to direct this kind of Mar cover Marvel film though, but um. But I was surprised by. It. I thought they actually they both did a pretty good, very good, very great job. I would say, directing the movie, and of course they're going. Of course they're directing the sequel, Captain America: Civil War, and they're going to direct the Avengers: Infinity War Part One and Part Two, which my brother is insane. You know, it's gonna be like the biggest. It's gonna be the biggest movie ever because they're having so many people in one movie, and of course they're shooting it back to back as well. So, so. So that's what the Russo brothers are doing. They're directing this film. They're directing Captain America: Civil War. They're going to be they're going to be directing Avengers: Infinity War Part One and Part Two. But I wasn't sure at first because of the directors because they directed the comedy like You Mean Dupree though. But that but I was surprised by it and they did a great job directing this film. And and it takes place in, and the film takes place a couple years um, after. Um, New York, you know, the first Avengers film, which I will review the first one, because <laughs> I feel like I'm going around the, the first Avengers film, which I do like, though, because I reviewed Age of Ultron, so, but, 
maybe I should, maybe after this, maybe I will review the first Avengers film just to get that out of the way. Um, but it does take place a, a couple of years after New, the Battle of New York, and um, and Steve Rogers, Captain America, is in Washington, D.C. And I thought I thought that was kind of a funny scene where um it opens up where um Sam Wilson, the Falcon, he's he's you know he's doing his daily run, and Steve Rogers is running faster than him. He's like on your left, going past him again on your left, and it's like, Sam was like like don't say it, don't say it. He's like on your left. So, I thought that was, that was kind of a funny scene. So, and then it shows that um, he's um, do a, they have a, they have a mission. He's on a mission to rescue these hostages on this boat um, with Scarlett Johansson and um, um, what's the crossbow's name is um, Brock uh, Romlo, played by Frank Grillo. Which um, I thought uh, Frank uh, Frank Grillo. I thought I thought he was pretty he's pretty good as an actor because um. Um, I liked him. I liked him in um, uh, the Purge, Anarchy, and I'm interested to see uh, him because he, he, he's also coming back in the, the the next sequel, the Purge Election Year. I thought he did a pretty good job in the Purge, Anarchy, the, the second one. And I don't know, I'm looking forward to see him back in um, um, Election Year, the Purge Election Year. And also, but also, I do uh, one thing after. Um, I was like, really, I forgot he was in that movie. He was in that really bad Wes Craven film. He was the he played a detective um, in that film, uh, My Soul to Take. That was not a good movie, especially Wes Craven. Wes Craven made rest in peace though, but it was not a good movie, My Soul to Take. And I forgot that Frank Grillo was. <laughs> see, the film was so bad. I forgot that he was in it. He played it. He played um, a detective in that movie. And also, he's he was supposed to be a star in the sequel to Skyline, really called Beyond Skyline. Now the first Skyline I absolutely loved, and I thought that was kind of an underrated alien movie. But um, and Beyond the Skyline says that he's going to star in the film, and I'll be interested to check that film out. So, so Franco, I thought he was doing he's pretty he's doing, he's a pretty good as 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 an actor, I would say, because I liked him in the Purge and Arc game. Look forward to seeing him coming back in the Purge election year, and I liked him in this film. And as they're approaching the boat, um, Steve goes and jumps out without a parachute, and one of the guys says he jumped out without a parachute. And then Frank Grillo says, "Yes, he did." And then, and then they approach the boat. It's supposed to be um, it's taken over. It's taken over by um this guy, who's by the name of um, um, Jor uh, uh Batroc, who is was also a a, a a a villain, um George Batroc, aka the Leaper. And he's played by a USC fighter, George St. Pierre, really enough. And then he's like, he's wearing the the, 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 the the color of the jacket he's wearing, kind of like matches what he wore in the comics. Which I thought was kind of a nice touch on it. The Leaper is his Batroc, Batroc the Leaper. So that was kind of nice to how his jacket matches like the color that his he wore in the comics. And I thought George St. Pierre did a pretty uh, decent job as a villain, even though he didn't say much though, but... He gets into a nice, pretty, nice, uh, decent fight with um, with uh, Chris Evans, and and they start taking out they take, start taking out the bad guys and um, Chris and when they least another that Chris Evans gets to the fight with George St. Pierre. Like I said, very good, decent fight, you know. Um, and then they send then uh, um, Steve sees um Natasha, Scarlett Johansson um, doing something else. Like she's like. Saving all this, putting this data on this um, USB, and says that's not the, that's not the plan. We're here to rescue hostages, and then the the, uh, the leaper he gets away by throwing a grenade, and Steve Rogers is not happy about that, and then and then it goes to and it goes to um uh the Sh Shield head headquarters and sees uh Samuel uh goes to talk with a uh, Nick Fury Samuel Jackson, um. Does he know I did all he being keeps keeping secrets from him, said I didn't, you know, said that, that Natasha had a different mission than you had. And then eventually he goes he goes talk, goes goes into an elevator to go down to the um obviously not saying basement, but uh, underground. And that was a little talk that um um see it was like um they used to put music on these elevators. And it's like um and um Nick Fury's talk about like hey has some his granddaddy 
that's what he said um, about them. Um, he worked them um, as an elevator operator, and um, he's great. He's love, he loved the people. They say hi. They say hi back. Got a lot of tips, and as the neighborhood got rougher, he held on that. He held on to the bag tighter. And he said, "You see, they say hi." He says, "Keep on stepping." And he would show him, to show him what the, the what the with his the bag is has, has a little money and it included a gun. He's like, "Yeah, my granddad loved the people." And then he shows the 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 place down down the ground where there's they're building more hell carriers, with more weapons. And and I, I I really do enjoy the and I really do enjoy the line that um that Steve Rogers says you know that um that they they they, they build these hell carriers they can stay up and keep an eye on people with the guns and stuff and it's more and, and see uh, and I really enjoy the line that that uh, Steve says like this is this isn't freedom this is fear I really I just really enjoy that line that he says right there um. So, so so after that, um, um, then you get, then um, uh, Nick Fury goes to talk with uh, Robert Redford, Alexander Pierce, um, talk that he, that he's um, goes to go the whole thing that's called it's called Project Insight. So, and Nick Fury wants to talk to him that he's feeling a little bit um, giving like a bit a little bit second thoughts about the project, like putting it on hold. And Alexander Pierce, well, he says, he says, all right, and he says. But you gotta, we gotta get Iron Man to drop by by and he says his birthday and stuff, you know. I thought it was another funny line that he says, you know, gotta get Iron Man to drop by my niece's birthday and stuff. <laughs> All right, Rob Redford, he's always been, he's always been, a, he's always been a great actor. He's been starring in so many films over the years, you know, like All the President's Men, um, so many, so many other films, and just much I do like him in that movie, All the President's Men. He's been in so many, so many films, and I think he's in this film. He's in, he's in his. Well, I think he still is. Um, he's in his seventies, I believe. Robert Redford. He, to me, he doesn't look like he's in his seventies, but I think he looks up. Uh, I think he looks pretty much um good for his age, to be honest. But I thought, but I've always enjoyed Robert Redford as an actor, and he's, of course he's gonna be starring in the upcoming um the Disney the other Disney remake Pete's Dragon, which. Be interested to see that. So, um, then Nick Fury, um, he um tries to put the USB, but it's all been like he's like being locked out and stuff. And or one thing, listen to the least of this really good um car chase scene, which Nick Fury is just driving. He sees a, sees a patrol car. And says, "You want to see my lease?" And then as as they go, as he's about to go, he gets boxed in by all these um. Uh, uh, police cars, which they're not police officers, they're members of Hydra, and they they get this this like this uh, window breaker, and like his his window is really strong, and he has like he tell him to hold, and he's telling the, the computer to hold back this order, and when it gets it down to one percent, says now, and she pulls up a gun, starts sh uh, this machine gun, starts shooting all the people, all the Hydra Hydra people, and. The get, get the get the car going on a manual. And I thought it was a really really good. Car, I thought it was a really good car chase, and he's he's he's, 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 try, he's driving through lanes, trying to avoid um the the, the Hydra the soldiers. They're still shooting at him. Like he, he hits some. Um, he makes one car bounce and hits one guy, and he back he backs up to makes one guy bounce off. Um. <clears throat> And uh, comes to another funny, uh, funny line that um, he's asking the computer like everything's not functioning. He says, "Well, what's not? Well, what is what is still functioning?" And the computer says, "Air condition is fully functional." So that was another funny line right there. I thought it was a, this was an overall pretty good car chase. He's just driving, just trying to uh, avoid the Hydra. What at first he didn't know it was Hydra. So, but um, and then. Then he sees a then he sees one person standing in the middle of the road, and that's the Winter Soldier. He shoots like a, a thing underneath that goes underneath the car and ex car the car and make it explode, making the car flip. And Nick Fury manages to escape. It has in this little uh, device makes him clear cut like a hole in the ground, so he makes so he, so he can escape. And then he goes to uh, Steve's apartment, and he, he shows him on this little thing that um, you know, shields compromised, ears everywhere. 
try to be discreet as possible. And then he gets sh and then he gets shot, and he sees the Winter Soldier up on the roof. Um, a one a one agent that's with him, um, Agent Thirteen. What is his name? Is um, yeah, Sharon Carter, Agent Thirteen, um, to help um, Nick Fury and um, Katak as as Steve Rogers goes after goes after the Winter Soldier, which he didn't know who it was. And I thought it was a really, really cool scene is as he tosses the shield and the Winter Soldier goes and catches it like you saw in the trailer. So he throws it, catches it with his metal arm, and then throws it back at him. And that was, I always thought that was a cool scene, how he just catches his shield with his metal arm. And to the best understand as the Winter Soldier, really good, really, really, really good job. Um, though, essentially, the how they'll pump from what he... How they made, how they look, was in the comics. You had the metal arm, like silver, and like this, uh, like the star on here. I thought, I thought he made the, the him look like the Winter Soldier from the comics. So I thought it was kind of a good thing. So, so then that uh, Nick Fury's taken the hospital, and well, you think he, he uh, he's he's now dead though because he didn't survive the surgery. So, and uh, Maria Hill's there, and he was gonna, he was gonna, she was gonna take him away. Um, and then, um, Alex, and then next scene that, um, um, he goes, he, uh, Steve goes and talks with Alexander Pierce, saying, uh, what was, say what was Nick Fury, uh, doing his apartment, and, um, he, he also gave around, gave a background of some things that, um, of what happened years ago, uh, with him, um, with, um, Alexander and Nick Fury. So he promoted he he promoted because he saved his daughter and um, he promoted him to um, head of Shield. And then he asked him again, "What was he doing in his apartment?" He says, "He told me not to trust no one." And then, then as, as he uh, as he leaves, then you get to another really good um, fight scene, probably one of my favorite fight scenes. In the, well, yeah, it's definitely one of the favorite fight scenes in the film. Um, like all he sees all he sees all these men just put go coming into the elevator, including him. Um, Brock Romwell. Um And he sees all these, all these men coming in, he's like standing in the middle and he's like, Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? And they start attacking him, like uh, they get like they like these like taser sticks, I say, you know, to shock him. Or what like a bracelet like a magnet to hold to restrain him. And he's beating up all these peop all these guys. Really good really good. And it wasn't all and it wasn't all shaky cam which i appreciated it was not all shaky cam it was like i could see what's going on i could see that who who's he fighting who it's really good at ed editing wise for the for this fight scene especially in this one elevator and and um uh brock saying is like whoa he's a big guy just want you know cap this ain't personal and he knocks him out and then he says it kind of feels personal gets a she like how he gets a shield up, kicks a shield up to put her on his arm and then more, uh, more, um, more people start coming. And he cuts the cables to the elevator to make it go down, but it stops. And then he goes and jumps off the out of the elevator, way, way long drop. He falls all the way to the ground. And he gets on his bike. He gets on his bike, and um, he's trying to get. He's getting blocked by a chopper or whatever what kind of helicopter where it is. But he manages to you know use a shield to deflect it and gets away. And he goes, he goes back to the hospital work because he he had the um, Sam um, Sam Jackson um, gave him the USB, but then he hid it in a vending machine. And he goes back to retrieve it, but it's gone. But um, Scarlett Johansson has it, and she wants to tell him that um, she's telling him what's going on and stuff. And uh, she tell uh, she tells him that's about about the Winter Soldier, the Winter Soldier that she went after him one time, but um, he was uh, transpiring this one guy, and the Winter Soldier was there, and. He he sh he shot right through her to kill the person, and he said that he's been he like had claimed over like a, over a dozen assassinations over the last seventy years or fifty years. So so they go so they go to a they go to a mall to 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 find out where this uh to, to plug in the USB to find out where this uh, location is at, and as a as are trying to look out for. Um, well, shield agents, but they're not. And 
one thing leads to another is that they they they, they take they take a truck and and the, the, there is another line that um Scarlett Johansson says that um when did when did Captain America learn how to steal cars? Or not stealing or borrowing. Of course, if everyone guessed that joke, it was it was a thing that from the ninth that uh, bad nineteen ninety movie of Captain America where he just goes and steals a car. That was a reference right there, but that was not a good movie though. And so that was if everyone gets that joke, that's what it's referencing from. Um, or one thing uh, in the mall. Well, before, before that, um, in the mall, they were trying to get away from the before not being noticed by the shield agents. Um, Oscar Johansson was telling him to kiss, to tell him Steve to uh, kiss to kiss her for not to be seen by the because of Frank Grillo was right there. So then he then while they're as a drive and he said and she she asked him was that her first kiss since nineteen I forget what year nineteen forty forty five or whatever and he's like he's like that bad huh and he's like I'm ninety five I'm not dead so and as they drive and as they and as they, and as they, uh, they drive they find uh, the pl this place um it was like a into New Jersey New Jersey it was like an old place where one of the places that uh, Steve was training at before he got the serum. In them, and oh, I forget how far how far I forget. I, I mentioned earlier, but um, before before the whole this, I forgot to mention he um he has he has a talk he has a talk with Peggy Carter who is still alive and she's extremely old. Um, Haley Atwell com coming back as Peggy Carter, of course, just for the small cameo appearance, but um. She she he, he learns that you know that she had a he, she had a she had a family shows pictures, and and she he still still kiss and she still cares about him and he still cares about her. But she she's but uh, she um says you know. You got to live all your life, but and then um, she says you know the only my only regret is that you didn't get to live yours. And and uh, well of course I have to make the. The, it was a nice, it was a nice line where they referenced from the first film was like, um, I could leave my best girl behind when that's what Steve's taught, telling her, not, not, not that she still owes me a dance, because that was what they were saying at the end of the first film, you know, they, 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 they want to go on a date with on a dance, so it was a nice thing to reference from the first film that that she that he still remembers that they still wanted to do a dance, and they, of course they there were some, yeah, there was uh, some. I thought there was, there was some slight makeup though. With of course there was some CG enhancement to make her um, look extremely old though. But I thought it was making her look old was pretty good because it's been like over seven years and she's now an old woman, Peggy Carter. So didn't bother me though. If, if there was some CG enhancements, it didn't bother me because I think she looked like she was a really old woman. So so I forgot to mention that scene though. But anyway, so they go down to the bunker and uh, they put the USB drive in. And you see, you see, um, Toby Jones comes back as Artem, Artem Zola, you see his face on the computer monitor, which it was a reference, of course, it's a, not telling what he was in the comics, but his face on the monitor was a good, um, reference, as what I thought. So, Toby Jones comes back as Artem Zola, you see, so, that, um, he explains, um, and he explains, like, Artem Zola was a German scientist working for the Red Skull. He's been dead for years. First correction, I am Swiss. Second, look around, Captain. I have never been more alive. In 1972, I was I was I was received by a terminal diagnosis. Science could not save my body. My mind, however, that was worth saving. And it's like a whole all this bunch of all this data. And um, it's all it's basically his brain. And he explains that. The whole thing on Project Insight is that over the years since he was recruited by Shield, he basically he basically made Hydra grew within Shield. So, and Project Insight is about the hell hell carriers and stuff, and and that's not, that's not very good. And then um, uh, Shield has sent a bomb to destroy the bunker, and Arnim Zola is like, "I'm afraid I have been stalling, Captain. Admit it. It's better this way." We are both of us out of time, and they hide in this um this little hole, and um all the rebels coming down. So his captain is trying to hold his best with his shield to block it, but they manage to get out of there, and um they go to Sam's place to to, to lay low, and 
he um uh, Sam wants to um help Captain America because he needs him. And he has this, this device that he was a pilot when his partner was killed, and it was not he was not he was he was a flying a helicopter. He wore the Falcon wings, and they have a, they have a plan. They had to get one of the, the the guys, um, Jasper Sidwell, who was the guy who was holding on hostage on the boat, which he's he's a member of Hydra, and you see him talking with the late um, Gary. Uh, sh 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 where is it? Uh, Gary, 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 Sh Sh uh, Shanley, uh, Shanley, who just recently passed away, you know, and he, which he, which he played the, the uh, sent the Senator Stern from, from Iron Man 2. Um, it's, 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 uh, sad that he's now passed away, so, but at least he, at least he came back to, um, uh, play the Senator, and, and, he, and he's talking, he's talking when, which, he says, you know, Hail Hydra. Which he is, which which is now he is with Hydra's now, and uh, Jasper is um, gets a call and it's from and it's it's uh, Sam talking to meet him somewhere and they take him on the roof and they're gonna they're gonna push him off uh, to tell what's Project Insight and he says that's not your style, Captain. He says you're right, it's hers. Scarlet Johansson goes and kicks him off and but he gets picked by 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 Sam Wilson wearing the Falcon wings. And he tells him about what Project In Project Insight is. Tells him, you know, it's the the with the health carriers that they can target everywhere. Who is a threat to Hydra? And he mentions Bruce Banner and Stephen Strange. It's Doctor Doctor Strange. So Ben mentioned mentioned Stephen Strange. Automatically, he's going to be in the universe. So so he's you know Bruce Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, anyone who's a threat to Hydra. So as and as and as, and as they're driving. Um, the the Winter Soldier comes in, uh, throws Jasper off the the freeway, killing him, and then takes, grabs the steering wheel, tears it out, and they take the Kevin grabs all to both of them to off the door, and more Hydra agents coming in. Um, there's a bunch of gunfire. A captain is getting a shield, you know, block against this guy who has a Gatling gun. Get take him out. Um. And then he gets into a, a fight, pretty good fight with um with the Winter Soldier. As he takes off his mask, he realizes it's Bucky. He's like Bucky, who the hell is Bucky? Of course, in, in the comics, you know, um, with um Bucky Barnes, he got his memory wiped. He's been brainwashed, and but he but he but he, but he manages to get away. And Scarlet Johansson, she got shot here, and is to be taken into custody, taken into custody by the Hydra agents. Um, Maria Hill is there to uh, take out uh, the one that's is standing guard with them. They manage to get out through the cutting that using that device to cut the hole through. And they take it back to another hidden location where Sam Jackson is alive. They pretend to be dead. So they they started to make they had to make a plan to take out the hell carriers by switching these um chips here to make them make them target each other. So and then he goes and then Captain um, Steve goes and takes. His old, um, his old uniform that he wore back in during the war, and you get Stanley's cameo appearance as a security guard, and he says, "Oh man, I am so fired." Um, oh, one thing for me, especially about the the Captain America Museum. Um, during the beginning, you hear this, you hear this narrator telling about the life of uh, Captain Rogers. It's actually voiced by Gary Sinise, really enough. Gary Sinise, you know, from Forrest Gump and Ransom, CSI New York. Uh, so yeah, I was like, oh, oh, cool. You know, Gary Sinise has a little uh, voice role in this. He's the voice of this narrator who's voicing about uh, in this museum about Captain Rogers and stuff. Okay, cool. Gary, Gary, Gary Sinise has a little appearance in this. Uh, oh, voice appearance basically. So yeah, and then so he gets his old uniform. Big War back in, during the war, and. When they when they lean to another is that um they get they get they get to the shield headquarters they explain the whole the whole entire building the shield that has been compromised by Hydra Hydra can be anywhere can be standing right next to you um, Frank Grillo comes in tells this one guy to act start the act to activate the Hell Carriers which the guy says no um, Sharon Carter Agent Thirteen says pulls holds the gun on him and some other. Uh, to stand up between Hydra and some other Shield agents who are not with Hydra. So, but then 
they, they start f firing. Frank will override the system, make him start. And then, what that leads to another is that um, uh, Captain America gets one chip in to one Hell Carrier. Sam Wilson gets one one chip in to the other Hell, Hell Carrier. And, um, while he's being chased by this, there's, while, he's, while he's being shoot one, he's being shot at. Good, good, good sequences, good action sequences as Captain America's taking more men out. And then, and then one leads to it that, um, he's, um, on the, the, he's getting to the last Hell Carrier to put the chip in, but Bucky is there. And he says, please don't, don't make me do this. But he has no choice, so, yes, he has to fight his best friend. And while that's going on, um, with Alexander Pierce, they know that he's been he's been exposed. That he's the leader leader of Hydra, and the the council people they're they're it's like oh you you son of a bitch and stuff like that. And and um, one of one of them one of the, the council uh, woman played by Jenny Gutter, which from American Werewolf in London, which she came back in the first uh, Avengers film as the council people though, but. But it's actually Scarlett Johansson in disguise, so she takes out the the other guards that was there, and she's down with all the all the things to to exposing everything to the public, and then Sam Jackson comes back in, and to help he has to he and Alexander Pierce had to you know use the eye scan to override the whole thing, but um the, he he erases password but. Except his one eye that has that has his patch over his messed up eye. So he says, "You got to keep both eyes open." So, and then, <clears throat> but then, um, but as, he's, as as Steve's fighting, as he's fighting Bucky and um, makes chokes him out. So as he's climbing back up, he's uh, Bucky shoots him a couple times, but he still manages to put the chip in, and now the the, hell, the three Hellcare is now shooting at each other, destroying each other, and Rob Ruffer is watching and saying, what a waste, and he's going to take up Scarlett Johansson as his hostage, and Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury um, says, you know, there was, there was a time I took I would have took a bull for you, and he says, you already have, and uh, Natasha activates this, this device, makes her shock herself, and Nick Fury goes and shoots Alexander Pierce, and, as, and just before he dies, he says, hail Hydra. And as the, the health carriers are going down, really good, really good effects of the health of the health carriers being exploding, going down. And um, although there was there was this one thing that um, while that's going on, um, Sam Wilson he got um he got um one of his wings got torn up by Bucky, so he's in the building. He gets into a you see a brief fight of him with um with Frank Grillo though, but um, it, but then just before they do, you know, they both start punching each other, they cuts. So we don't get a full fight on that though. Although I would like to see more of that though. But that's that's a nitpick though. But it cuts it cuts to them. They're fighting, and then one of the hell carriers crash into the building. Sam Wilson starts running, and um, Brock gets uh, caught in the rubble. But somehow he manages to survive though. But um, sorry about that. Just for some reason, I keep on getting these cuts. I don't. Know, I, don't I just don't know why. But anyway, anyway, just yeah. After um, after the whole thing, after the whole thing was done, um, um, Steve sees sees Bucky trapped under some rubble. Man just looked it up, but he beats him up some more. He says, "Try to make him remember who he was." And and um, Bucky is is punching him in the face a couple times, like you you're my mission and stuff like that. And it's like and. We'll do what you have to do. If he's telling him, I was like, because I'm with you to the end of the line. Because it was a thing that he, that he said to him back in the day. And as the, the, the shook some more, he falls in the water. And But uh, Bucky managed to save him, pull him ashore, and gets away. And, and sometime later, he's in the hospital with um, Anthony Mackie sitting next to him um, playing a song from Marvin Gaye, which he told him earlier. You have to listen to the song by Ma by Marvin Gaye. <laughs> um, and then it shows um, um, Gary Gary Shandling uh, getting arrested because um, he's a member of Hydra. Um, Frank Grill survived the rubble. And you see the the straps of the McForms and X calling him Crossbones. Um, Scarlett Johansson talking to like 
the Senate people and it says that you know about Hydra selling of lies, not intelligence, stuff like that, saying that um you you need us still. And Sam, Samuel Jackson, um, Nick Fury, uh, burning all of his uh, things and goes to his um visits his his grave, which um which is another reference um on the on a grave of says Nick Fury and there's a quote that says um path the path of righteous man, which is a reference that he said in Pulp Fiction, really enough. Kind of thought that was another kind of a nice touch right there. Because, you know, Samuel Jackson from Pulp Fiction referenced a quote that he said, that that line he said from, oh, I forget what, what it was, the Bible, I think it was, or something, but it, it was a reference from that, from Pulp Fiction. And, and then, after, 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 he, after, he, after he walks, um, uh, uh, Scarlet Twins managed to give the file on Buck, on Bucky, and says, no, that, and then, uh, Sam's telling him, um, you're going after him, isn't he? Yeah. Um, because it's good, when, when do we start? And then, then, it, and then it cuts to, um, uh, two, first, two of the credits, two, two of the credits during the, uh, two, two scenes during the credits, like, the first time you see, um, Baron Von Strucker, Talk, talking about um, the twins, you know, um, uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, and then, and then, and then it talks about them. Then the last scene were at the museum. Um, Buck, Bucky, trying to remember who he was. Sees a, an image of him, um, the things, the, mem the memory of him looking. So overall, then, then it goes. The next one leads to the Civil War. Well, after Age of Ultron, of course, which I reviewed. So. And, the, and of course, also uh, one quick thing. After the credits of Ant Man, it shows that um, um, it shows that Captain Captain Rogers has 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 found Bucky and w along with Sam Wilson. So then, uh, get and you get that that same scene that's going to be in Civil War. So, so overall, yeah. But Captain America: The Winter Soldier, I love this movie. It's definitely a whole lot better than the first one, though. I enjoyed it and. Uh, like I said, the, the first film didn't. Uh, the first one, Captain America didn't have that much to do though, except to, in the fight with with the Red Skull and stuff, you know, when fight some other Hydra soldiers. But um, he definitely had a lot more to do in this, which I was happy about, and he did a great job in the film. Uh, the fight scenes in the elevator, trying to try to take down the Hell Carriers, or the fight with um, George Saint Pierre. So. And uh, Scarlett Johansson, I thought she did a really good job. Same with Samuel Jackson as Nick Fury, Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. He definitely looked definitely looked like the character, how he was like the Winter Soldier in the comics, like how he caught um, his shield when he threw it at him. Um, I enjoyed the car chase with them with Nick Fury trying to run from the Hydra agents. Um, Robert Robert Redford as Alexander Pierce, I thought he did a great job as a bad guy as Alexander Pierce. The the effects I thought it was really well done, especially you know, the how when they're when the Hellcats are shooting at each other and they're all going down and um um Toby Jones as for his brief his brief appearance as Arnim Zola the computer monitors, um Haley Atwell for his, for a cameo appearance as old Peggy Carter, um Frank Grillo as as um Brock Brock Rumlow or AKA Crossbones, I thought he I thought he was fine as well and. See, he's going to be coming back and wearing this, this the Crossbones costume in Civil War. Um, Kobe Smulders is Maria Hill. She was fine as well. Anthony Mackett, they did a great job as Sam Wilson. Um, the Russo, the Russo brothers, I thought they, they did a great job directing the film. I really enjoyed this film. It's definitely one of my favorite Marvel films. Um, along with, you know, Ant-Man, Age of Ultron, and some other ones as well. But um, I, I, I love this movie. It's definitely a great sequel. I highly enjoy it much more than the first film. And it was also uh, it was much more faster paced than the first film. Um, the first one was like uh, like an hour, like a little over two hours. This film is like over like uh, it's like over two. It's more than more than two hours, like almost two and a half, and well below two and a half, I would say. But it went at a much faster pace. Like so the first film had was slow at spots though, but this was much, went at a much more faster pace, even though it had much more longer time than the first film. So it was definitely much faster pace than the first film. Um, 
I really enjoy this film. I really do. I'm glad. I'm glad to have this on DVD, and I'm really, which I really, and I really do. And, and I'm looking. I'm look. I'm looking forward to seeing Captain America: Civil War. But at the same time, I got one or two issues though. But um, I don't think it won't, probably probably won't be. I won't, I won't be that anymore though after I see the film though. But I'll have to wait and see on that. So, but because overall, a lot of those cast members I who I like, you know, in Captain America: Civil War. Of course, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., uh, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, Scarlett Johansson, Paul Bettany as Vision, Sebastian Stan as Winter Soldier, um, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye, Sam Will, Anthony Mackie, Falcon, Don Cheadle as War Machine, all those actors who I all liked. Um, but, um, well, to look, well, wait to see, so. So that's my review for Captain America the Winter Soldier, and then... Captain America Civil War coming out very soon, May 6th. So I figure out why, why I wanted to review both these Captain America films before the, the third one comes out. So, And hopefully the, Ru the Russo do a good job directing, this, directing the next one. Because they feel because this, this one's going to be, they the, 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 people are saying this one's going to be a much bigger hit than Batman vs. Superman. Well, this one, like I say, I like this one better, way better than Batman vs. Superman. And... I can already say this one. I, I, I can already say that. Well, of course, I haven't seen the film though. But just look from the trailer, you know, has better. It looks like it has better fights than Batman vs Superman. So and it's already have a. They say it's got a much bigger opening than Batman vs Superman. More money. I can definitely see that. All right. I I know that's gonna make more of the money. Batman vs Superman. So I already know that for a fact. But but for, for, for but going back to this one, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. If anyone's seen, I've seen the. This one, definitely check this film out. I definitely would recommend it. So, great sequel. I love this film. I'm glad that I have this on DVD. I just really enjoy this film. So, my review for Captain America Civil, Civil War. <laughs> the Winter Soldier. Thanks for watching and stay tuned on the next movie review. Later.